Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You know you're rolling with Bert and Lanny, the Dividend Diplomats. And guys, we're here to talk to you about three dividend stocks to buy as we head into February 2022, baby. That's right, Lanny. We are pumped up. It's always great to take a look at a watch list. But everybody, before we do, please subscribe to our channel already. Give this video a thumbs up. Check out the Diplomat Swag Store linked below. You want a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, a polo shirt, a coffee mug, a sticker. If there's anything that's missing that you want it, you tell us it'll pop up in the Swag Store. But in all seriousness, that's not why you're here. That's not why we're doing this video. Lanny has found three great undervalued dividend growth stocks to keep an eye out for here in the coming weeks. So Lanny, are you pumped up to be looking at dividend stocks to buy? Guys, I'm always pumped up to buy dividend stocks, looking for dividend stocks to buy right now in this volatile market. Obviously, you have the big headwinds from the inflation rate, you know, being at all time highs. You have the Fed obviously going to be boosting interest rates here in the upcoming March meeting, more than likely, as well as maybe two, three, four, five plus interest rate hikes this year. Let's see if they can. Uh... They can have more hikes than Tom Brady had Super Bowl rings in his career this year. Let's see if we're going with that. That's seven for those that are counting. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Obviously, we have to start with the first one. So we'll obviously, <laughs> what that doing, you know, but here we are, you know, the, the S&P 500 has come down from the highs of 4,800, now down to just over 4,400 at the close of business on January 28th. But Bert, I've got three undervalued dividend stocks on my watch list, on my radar, because guys, the name of the game here is to continue to invest into dividend stocks to boost that passive income stream. Yeah, the beauty of this is, despite the noise in the market, and what you're seeing is a lot of the companies that are coming down that are causing this are the tech stocks, your FANG stocks, all of those big value Growth stocks that were the darlings of 2021 have been struggling out of the gates here in 2022. We're pretending those don't exist for this. We are looking at those companies that are going to grow your income with those companies. They're going to help you build your income stream. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So guys, we're looking at three dividend stocks that I'm looking to buy. More than likely we'll end up buying hopefully this upcoming week of January 31st. Um, obviously, we're going to run them through the dividend diplomat stock screener focused on three dividend metrics, the price to earnings ratio being less than the S&P 500 and the competitors, dividend payout ratio below 60%, 40 to 60 is that perfect payout ratio as we like to consider. The third dividend metric is that dividend growth rate, looking at how much or how fast they grow that dividend as well as how many years do they grow that passive income stream? And Bert, what's that bonus? It's the dividend yield. And yeah, we run all companies on our watch list through this. We run all companies we're going to buy through the stock screener just to see how they check out. We'll compare them to the market. We'll look at them sometimes amongst others in the industry. But more importantly, too, we like them. We're going to run them through other metrics, too. It's just a great entry screener that gives you a quick way to assess, is this company undervalued? So, Lanny. Let's talk through this here. Um, it's exciting in here. How many of these companies on this list do you own currently? I own not one, not two, but all three now of these dividend oh, stocks. I love it, though, because, you know, you talked about a few weeks ago in a video that was produced about how you were selling some stocks. It was kind of nice to shed some positions from your portfolio, have a few less tickers to watch. So it's great to see that you're just going to be looking to add to positions that you already own, that you're already monitoring and growing your income from within your portfolio already. Yep. And I am still looking to slim down positions. I'm looking at there's about one to two stocks in my portfolio that don't really fit the mold of the dividend growth model. So stay tuned to see what Lanny B ends up doing there. But guys, let's dive in here. We've got three dividend growth stocks. Bert, shall I kick it off? You should. This first one really shouldn't be a surprise to too many of you, though, that have been watching our channel over the last month. Should it, Lanny? It shouldn't, because we were talking about them a few weeks ago when they were trading at $175 a share. And then I said I'd buy a share if it hit $160. It did. Share bought. And then I said, oh, yeah, if it drops 150, I'll buy a share. It did drop to 150, share bought. Guys, 
we're talking about T row price, ticker symbol T R O W. Yeah, it's been quite the year for T row price. They are down 23% year to date from those insane highs. That's nuts, though. It's, yeah, it is. It has fallen. I have nothing more to say. It's down to yeah, $44 in share price alone that it's lost value. No wonder it's popping up on your watch list and so many others in the dividend growth investing community. And that's just year to date. It's down actually close to $75 on a 52 week basis from around $225 a share. So they're trading as of the close on the 28th at $149.81. So guys, let's look at that first metric, the price to earnings ratio on the T row, the TROW, the Mr. Dividend Aristocrat themselves. Mr. I'm about to increase my dividend come February. Analysts are expecting $13.62. That equates to a one solid payout ratio of 11. All right. Yeah, that's well below the market, which is right around the mid 20s right now. It's in that 25X range for the PE ratio. So, yeah. Huge signs of undervaluation. Let's move into that second metric here, the dividend payout ratio. Currently, their annual dividend is $4.32 ahead of that dividend increase that you said is going to be coming here in the next couple of weeks. Divide that by the 1362. That gives you a payout ratio of 31.72%. Oof, nice. Below the perfect payout ratio standpoint, but definitely plenty of room to continue to grow that dividend that's about to happen. And Bert, I mean, how long and how hard have they been increasing that dividend? I mean, when you say it like that, how could we not want to talk about the third metric of the stock screener? We've increased that dividend for 35 consecutive years. Their five-year dividend growth rate is 15.07%. Strong dividend growth history there. And just for perspective, everybody, we said there's going to be a dividend increase coming up here in February. One of their competitors, Good old Chuck Schwab just announced an increase of 11.1% there. So the sector is still showing pretty sh- strong dividend increases right there. Double digits should be easily achievable here for T-Row in the next coming weeks. You know, it really should. And, you know, I think BlackRock also had a very large increase a few weeks ago. So I'm expecting, you know, very similar characteristics coming out of this increased season for TRO. That five-year dividend growth rate of 15% is actually with the special dividend stripped out. So this is purely just the consistent dividend because they had a nice fat special dividend in 2021 of, I think it was what, $3 per share? Yep. It was insane. And it's important to take that out of the dividend growth rate because you can't bank on special dividends being the norm. So it's crazy that even without that special dividend, they're still increasing on average 15% over the last five years. Why don't you tell us about that bonus metric, Landy, the dividend yield? You got it. So first, the S&P 500 is in that, you know, one and a quarter to 1.4% yield right now. The competitors of Chuck Schwab and BlackRock aren't quite as strong, you know, as as T-Row. Guys, T-Row price yields currently 2.88% 2.88% in this market. It's insane. Nothing, nothing, all smiles here. It's great. So let's summarize T row PE ratio 11, payout ratio 31.72%, increase that dividend for 35 years at a five year dividend growth rate of 15%, and a dividend yield of 2.88%. Man, it's crazy that they are closing in on 3%, isn't it, Lanny? It's crazy. I'm loving it. I'm liking it. Um, you know, the crazy part is, is that I still own at about $13,000 worth of T-Row, and I'm sure you're right up there. Um, yeah, the with this position. fall, it's crazy how much that position has grown since we bought it over five plus years ago. Oh my gosh, no doubt. Yeah. All right, well, guys, it's time to dive into that second dividend growth stock. And Bert, give me a little bit of background here about the stock that's on the list. It's a coffee shop near you. They have drive through lines that are always wrapped around the store and into the street. The cafes are always jam-packed as well in line when the stores are open. This company is Starbucks, ticker symbol S-B-U-X. Guys, Starbucks brings people together. It brings a little joy to that day. Um, you know, I know I even treated some of my coworkers to a Starbucks run or two during the holidays. 
And I mean, it's just about the whole, that, that little green emblem on the cup just really puts a smile on the face, makes that day better. Um, you know, this company obviously is massive, you know, revenue is in 25 plus billion dollars. You know, obviously they did very well in 2021 versus 2020. Um, and I expect big things heading into 2022. Starbucks also has taken a steep decline. And on a year-to-date basis, their stock is actually down almost 17% for good old Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX. So Bert, going into this first metric, what does that stock price look like? And what do, what do analysts look? All right. Yeah, that stock price has fallen so much during the year, as you said, down 60%. Starbucks is now trading below $100 per share. It's back in the yeah, it's back in the low three-digit share price there. Their current price is $97.21. Net forward earnings is $3.99. The PE ratio is 24.36. So, hey, it's in line with the S&P 500. But for a company like Starbucks, for perspective, that's actually pretty cheap for Starbucks over the years. Got to keep that in mind. Got to keep that in mind. I mean, somebody who's had revenue, I think, grow in the 20 plus percent from 2020 to 2021, albeit 2020 was a pandemic year, would still increase revenue almost over 10 percent from 2019 to 2021. So again, they're still in that growth, high growth model. Um, so you would expect a higher earnings multiple. Um, but we'll get into that second dividend metric now for that payout ratio. You know, they pay on annual basis $1.96 or $0.49 cents per share per quarter. With the analyst expectations of $3.99, Starbucks stock payout ratio, that dividend payout ratio is actually 49%. And Bert, what does that mean for this payout ratio? Well, it means it's perfect, you know, between that 40 to 60% range. Hey, what's not to like with that? There's not really much more to say checks that metric, we consider it perfect. Enough said right there. Moving into the next metric, dividend growth history. They've increased that dividend for 11 consecutive years. So they're on that journey to become a dividend aristocrat. And I doubt they're gonna stop for the next 14 years and hopefully they are not. How much have they increased that dividend? That's the name of the game there. To your point, they're a high revenue, high earnings growth company. So you'd expect a strong dividend growth rate to go along with that especially if they're paying out such a decent percentage of their earnings for a growth stock. Their five-year dividend growth rate is 16.88%. So it matches the expectations for what you'd expect here with Starbucks. You know, one thing to keep in mind, the last two increases we've seen from Starbucks have been four cents. So they went from 41 to 45 during 20. They went from 45 to 49 in 21. So if they keep, if they somehow keep that trend up, you know, we're looking at about an 8% dividend growth rate possibly this year, which, hey, that's definitely above the rate of inflation. You definitely can't complain too much about it. And then when you pair that up with this metric coming up, the dividend yield, the yield now is over 2%. So it's, it was always hard to find Starbucks yielding over 2%. It's been a few years, but they're finally back. I think when I bought Starbucks for my own portfolio, it was three or four years ago, and they were yielding about 2.3, 2.4%. And then with the price appreciation that they've had over the years, it's been hard to get that rate again. Well, they're finally back over at least 2%, Bert. Yeah, it is crazy. I'm trying to think, when was it that I bought Starbucks? I bought it when it was going through a slump when there were some major question marks about Starbucks. I can't remember the years, but there was a period of time where they were trading right around the $50 per share, dipping into the 40s. And that's when I decided to load up. It was at that time. And you just had, I had a good feeling about this company. So it is crazy that they're back. Their yield is over 2% once again. It's interesting to see why, and that makes a lot of sense to me for why they pop back up on your watch list. So let's summarize these here just to get it in aggregate here. P ratio 24.36, payout ratio 49%, five-year dividend growth rate 16.88%. Increase that dividend for 11 years with that yield now over 2% at 2.02. There it is, two dividend growth stocks. Now let's get into the third one. The third one that's been newer to the dividend investing channel. Not many dividend investors talk about it or any investors in general. And you know, during especially the stock market volatility, but I talked about it so far, I think once or twice, definitely on the blog, definitely on the YouTube channel. Guys, this comes from the battle. We're talking about Anthem. 
ticker symbol ANTM. And I have to talk about this company because, guys, this is just the cash flowing cash cow machine over here. Um, you know, they're currently trading at $442.09 and 400 EPS. And guys, hold your chair. You know, don't fall off the edge of your seat. The four earnings per share expected is $32.42. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's just not a lot of shares outstanding for this company. If there's one that could probably benefit from a stock split here or there, it'd probably be Anthem now, wouldn't it? Um, it's all it's funny how those numbers can stack up differently amongst companies. So yeah, 32.4 to EPS. Where does that leave the PE ratio, Andy? What is it? $442.09 per share. Divide that by 32.42. That gives you a PE ratio of 13.64. I mean, guys, these are just bigger numbers, but you still look at it on a ratio basis. So yeah, 13.64, definitely a good sign of undervaluation. You know, when you think of Anthem, you know, the revenue that they bring in is in the hundred plus billion mark. I mean, I think they're around 92 billion in revenue in 18, definitely around 100, 405 billion in 19, over 120 plus billion in 20. And guys, it just keeps going up from there. Premiums are going up, obviously COVID, you know, a lot of that, you know, the claims going up, premiums are going up. So guys, be prepared for another big year of Anthem. Anthem just increased their dividend um, over 13%, I believe this past week which is a great segue into the dividend payoff ratio. You know, they now pay a nice dividend of $1.28 per share per quarter or $5.12 per year. Still taking that over $32 of earnings per share, their payout ratio is only 15.79%. Yeah, I mean, not much more to say. Low payout ratio, plenty of room to keep growing there. It'll be interesting to see when we dive into that dividend yield, we won't jump ahead to that quite yet, but there's going to be plenty of room to keep growing that dividend by 13% or more for years to come. That is for sure. Third metric here, dividend growth rate, five-year dividend growth rate is 11.86%. You just said they announced at 13%. So it's right in line with their average, what they're doing, pretty consistent, which is always great to see. Increase that dividend for 10 plus consecutive years. So like Starbucks on that journey to become a dividend aristocrat. And last but not least, now looking at the dividend yield, you know, before they were well below 1%, but now with the price depreciation this year to date um, and the dividend increase, their yield is now 1.16%, so slightly below the S&P 500, but again, lower yield, higher dividend growth, and that is exactly what you get with Anthem. So to summarize, 13.64 PE ratio, a 15% payout ratio, 10 plus years of growing in their dividend, by an average rate of just about 12% with the yield at 1.16%. So Bert, round out the other two as well. T Rowe, P ratio 11, payout ratio 31%, five-year dividend growth rate, 15%, or they're an aristocrat, the only one on this list, 35 years of consecutive increases with a 2.88% yield, while Starbucks, that P ratio of 24, the perfect payout ratio of 49% with a 16.88% five-year dividend growth rate, 11 consecutive years of dividend increases with a yield over 2%. So, Andy, why don't you rank them here? It's your watch list. Let's see what's one, two, and three for you heading into the week. So right now, the way it stands from a position standpoint for me and my portfolio, I want Starbucks to fall so bad. I want them to keep falling. I want to buy more Starbucks. Um, stock. And then I want to buy Anthem stock. I want Anthem to be a large position in the portfolio. So I want to buy more Anthem. You know, sadly, the price went up 12 bucks after I bought one share at $430. Pretty pissed off about that. Not going to lie. Um, third on my list is T. Rowe Price. But again, that's just based on what's already in my dividend stock portfolio. I think these are all three great undervalued dividend stocks to buy right now. How about you, Burr? What do you think? What's your take? I mean, I think they're all well worth spots on the watch list here. It just really depends on what shakes out as well. I mean, again, T. Rowe Price, not a bad option as well, especially as they close in on 3% yield there. I mean, if they ever touch that 3% yield, which shouldn't really be that far off for them, especially the way that price has been falling, I will definitely be adding. Starbucks, Nibble, maybe here or there. There are plenty of other stocks that I know I've been building Unilever for my wife and I too. So that's something that I want to keep building that position. Um, and Anthem, 
I mean, I don't know if I really want to add another new position. I don't own them, um, but it's always worth watching because, hey, if they keep falling, why not? All great dividend growth stocks. So everyone, let us know. What do you think of these three companies? How many of them do you own? How many are you going to be watching? And how would you rank the three of these companies in the coming weeks? And if not, what other stocks are you going to be watching in February? That's also a very important question here. Guys, we appreciate the love. Let us know in the comments. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a beat. Smash the heck out of the, you know, the thumbs up if you liked our video. We appreciate you guys spending time here with the Dividend Diplomats. Keep buying stocks. Keep adding passive income on that journey to financial freedom. That was Bert and this was Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out.